Willie D Live. What's up, family? We've all tried our luck with the lottery. Buy a ticket, scratch it off, and hope for a miracle. But what if that miracle never happens because the cashier had already pocketed the winners? Meet 41-year-old Teresa Blanco, a Winn-Dixie cashier, a single mom who didn't just dream of winning the lottery. She rigged it. She stole over $11,000 in scratch-offs and found a way to turn losing tickets into winners, hoping it would balance the register and keep everything under the radar. But the scheme fell apart when the Florida lottery noticed they'd overpaid thousands of dollars to winners. An investigation caught her on camera, scanning all of the winning tickets while leaving everyone else empty-handed. Teresa was immediately arrested. I ain't got no problem with that and here's why. Because you got people out there playing that lottery and putting everything they got on it and they're coming up empty handed. They're playing fair and square. The lottery is already nerve wracking. Some people play the lottery several times a day. Some people spend half their damn paycheck playing the lottery. I know you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to just buy a ticket, you know, maybe a handful of tickets or whatever, but spending bill money, playing the lottery, is not wise, but people do it. And, you know, people be stressed out over these damn lottery. People get into fights. People break up. You know, it's a lot that come with that. And for you, who have been entrusted to pack fair, where everybody who play have a fair chance and you compromise the game like that, that ain't cool, man. That ain't cool. I don't appreciate that at all. I don't play the lottery anymore. I used to play all the time. Boy, I used to buy 100 tickets at a time, but I don't do it anymore. Uh, I just say, you know what? I ain't got time to even check the lottery. I ain't, I ain't got time to just be playing with it like that. Like, you know, let's, let somebody else do it, you know. I just don't have the patience, man. I don't have the patience, and I don't have the nerves. And so I don't gamble at all anymore, actually. I just stopped gambling, period. Long time ago. But anyway, let's get back to Teresa. Teresa had the nerve to think that after she stole all of those tickets, that she would not go to jail. She, she was like, well, the, the police standing there talking to her. And she's like, well, so you saying I can't go home? <laughs> you saying I can't go home? Yeah, that's about the size of it. No, you can't go home. And she's like, I got a seven month old child. I think she said she had a three-month-old. And she out here stealing lottery tickets like it wasn't going to come back on her. She scooped up two felonies. She got two kids. She's a single mother. And she put herself in a position to have her children taken away from her. I actually don't even know what happened to the kids because she was trying to get somebody to come pick them up, but she couldn't get anybody on the line. So I don't know if they took the kids to CPS or what, but let me tell you something. Uh, it takes an unfit mother to, to gamble uh, with their kids with CPS because CPS is overall a horrible, horrible organization. Horrible. I've heard so many horror stories about CPS and how they mistreat children, 
how some of them sexually assault children. Some of the people who, who work for CPS have sexually assaulted children. I've even heard of people who work for CPS pimping, sex trafficking children. It's serious. If you work for CPS and you're a really good social worker and you're doing your job like you're supposed to do it and you love those children for real and you protect them with everything you got, I salute you one thou. I give it to you. I'll give it up to you a thousand times. But your coworkers, I see you. I see you. I know you. They need to do a more extensive background check, if they do a background check at all, of those CPS workers. Because a lot of them are uncivilized mutts. And they're not there for the children. Actually, a lot of times, they're there to just displace the children. That's right, I said it. They don't care what happened to those kids a lot of times. How many times these kids be in CPS and they end up getting hurt? And they'll send the kid right back to the parent multiple times sometimes. And then the kid end up dead. And nothing ever happens to the social workers. Never. The case where they call them social workers. Case workers, I believe they call them case workers. In any event, fam, you know, CPS, uh, I mean, I just have a low opinion of the organization overall. But let's get back to Teresa. Teresa was very honorary. And they was asking her for her address. And she went, what do you need my address for? No, she didn't stole. What do you need my address for? Uh, so we can know where to find your ass at next time you steal a lottery tickets. <laughs> what, what you need my address for? Teresa is still in lottery tickets and cameras are everywhere. She even acknowledged that that cameras are everywhere. And she said, well, y'all ain't got me on camera. You know, show me a camera where I'm on it. Y'all ain't, you know, if somebody say, can you show me a camera <laughs> where you see me stealing? You know, if they tell you that, you know, they were stealing, right? Come on, Teresa. Got to do better than that. Teresa ended up getting two years probation. She failed to complete her probation and they ended up giving her six months in jail. So even when she got her kids back, she still forfeited them again and ended up doing six months in jail. I don't think you're supposed to take chances like that when you have children. Say it with me, family. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. No more talk.